and just let me share my screen. Okay. Just let me know once you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So welcome once again to Sudat Mulesoft Meter 54. And topic for today's meetup is the Mulesoft automation, and it will be presented by uh, Amir Khan. So Amir Khan is a well-known uh, person in the Mulesoft community. Uh, like you may have seen a lot of posts and a lot of good posts, I will say, uh, uh, from the Amir on the LinkedIn, basically. So he will going to uh, present on the Mulesoft automation. And before we start with uh, session, I want to just uh, go with a safe harbor statement. Both the speaker and host are organizing this meetup in the individual capacity only. We are not representing any organization here. This presentation is completely or strictly for the learning purpose only. An organization, organizer and presenter do not hold any responsibility. That same solution will work for your business requirement. The, pre the presentation is not meant for any promotional activity. So recording of the, this meetup uh, will be uploaded on the event page within 24 hours. You can ask question at any time. Try to make the session more and more interesting. And we would love to get back from you. So simply like you will receive the email. Uh, in that email, you will receive a, a feedback link. You can just click the feedback link and you can start giving the feedback about the meetup. Yeah, so, so organizer for this meetup is myself, Jitendra. Uh, yeah, I will just skip my introduction. Nidhis, would you uh, would you want to give your introduction? Uh, I'll skip too. Uh, let's start. Sure. So, I mean, like, I will just unshare my screen, and you can start sharing your screen. Uh, okay, and you can start with the presentation. I will just let me see. Can I share my screen? Yeah. Okay. So you should be see my screen now. Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So that's still black on my side. I don't you see already something. Yeah, yeah, it's loading now. Okay, now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, perfect. now it's up. So brand new topic. I've been presenting at many a meetup uh, already. Uh, really good opportunity for all the attendees to ask questions because Mulesoft has been really becoming big in the integration space now entering the nation market requires a mind shift as well as well the technology which we will be adding to our portfolio concepts around automation um, is also not one-to-one -one like we have in integration so there's kind of a change uh, happening integration will always stay our main you know, bread and butter. I saw it in one of the slides, bread and butter business, but automation is and we are really going into innovative streams and trying to bring in new capabilities and features into our automation. Um, so what we have planned, just before we go into the agenda, quick uh, introduction of myself. I'm a SE solution engineer at Microsoft. Um, really passionate about new technologies, emerging technologies, more in the automation space, DevOps, agile development. I'm uh, based out of Zurich, uh, Switzerland, and um, yeah, I love basically the typical thing uh, as a SE family food, soccer, cricket, and sometimes not. And yeah, uh, if you want to connect, scan this uh, QR code here and happy to connect and uh, uh, on social media. I'm only active on LinkedIn, so um, feel free to connect there. Um, in terms of the agenda, what we have planned is, as I mentioned already, it's a new topic and really I will be going very slowly through those slides and also through the demo to really from you. Uh, so, you know, it's all about understanding. It's a new topic. So I want to make sure that everyone is on the same page. You got uh, the right understanding where we are, are heading with our automation uh, offering. What is the point of view? What are the capabilities Microsoft is providing? Uh, the different components we will be looking into. So RPA, Composer, AnyPoint. So this is an offering. 
later on we will dive into an architecture diagram to see how this is interacting with each other, how this is interacting with components. A um, couple of live demos, I think three we have planned for today. Use cases also, what are the typical use cases? Because I've been, since August last year, I've been presenting this to many, many, many prospects and customers, understanding the problems, their challenges uh, in terms of uh, limited capacity and resources and all so how automation can benefit so what we did is you know a couple of use cases we have just anonymized and made it more consumable for the community so you know okay these could be potential use cases and should be giving you ideas about new cases or you may see on your uh, side um, and then wrap up like next steps uh, q and a um, but I will be during the presentation to make sure that we are on the same page and feel free to ask uh, any question. Um, I think it's a, yeah, it's a win-win for both sides. Yeah. Is it okay for everyone if we continue like this? Yes. Yes, yeah. Okay. So let's directly jump into the need for automation. I'm pretty sure this slide deck or this slide in particular has been seen by some of you. So I use this quite often to explain why automation is needed. And it is representing the average company lifespan over the last 60 to 70 years. Past it was like, you know, it was decreasing, but it was mainly due to economical events which were happening around the world. That and then decreasing uh, again and in the recent 10 to 15 years it has mainly been decreasing due to the digital is happening due to emerging technologies and the digital transformation and um, what we see is that many of us they are overloaded with work businesses are overloaded with work and do not have this free capacity to invest in innovation and it's basically any company so it doesn't really impact only small sized companies middle size or uh, enterprises really across the line every business is impacted every company is impacted and you have to move you have to do something in order to provide innovation to the market because if you cannot provide the innovation to the market you will be disrupted so there's no line in between either you innovate Will be disrupted, and of course, MuleSoft wants to ensure that we give you the right tools and capabilities to be the disruptor by providing the innovation and really consuming automation in a way which is beneficial for your organization. Also, here it's nothing new, right? So, automation I've been doing automation the last 15 years with Windows capturing and uh, there is an unrealized uh, promise upon automation. So it's not a new topic what Microsoft is entering. Still, we are entering it, and I will tell you exactly why we will be doing it. But when we look into this uh, few numbers here from the last uh, year Connect report of Microsoft, you see why organizations see automation uh, being failing in their uh, projects. And one of those uh, issues is that 70 percent say there is a missing user experience uh, which is harming the automation only integrated around about 28 percent of all apps and there's a mismatch between data connectivity there's a lack uh, in experience which is also harming and stopping the automation initiatives and when you look into these problems you will and this is what Microsoft is doing all the time, right? So we are providing connected user experiences. Integration is our bread and butter, and also unlocking data and apps is something where Microsoft is really specialized on. So this is also why um, we believe we can change the market. We can provide an impact to really provide a successful promise upon automation. Um, and that's why we are entering it. But before we go into what new, let's see how automation has been perceived as it is today in the market. So when you talk about automation, 
you will realize it very soon the discussion with your clients within your project uh, with your uh, peers it will go very discussion about rpa yeah, robotic process automation which is only via uh, ui so user interface or ui graphical user interface um, which is automating basically everything on a ui level yeah but let's see how it became so the roots of automation lies in imagine we are a company with different kind of processes implemented using different technology and we have multiple in our organization implemented with the same or different technology and sometimes there's a need to interconnect right and i don't need to tell you about what is the to interconnect these processes you are the experts you can easily say this is done simply with system integration would solve these challenges but many organizations especially the smaller ones they don't have the skill set they don't want to invest in system integration so what they do is the easiest integrating or interconnecting these processes with each other they have someone who understands the business processes they are working on daily in Salesforce, in Microsoft, ServiceNow, and other applications, so they understand the business processes. So what they do is like they say, okay, repetitive work, yeah, copying order information from SAP from the UI. So you log into SAP, copy the order information, open the browser, go into Salesforce, go to the opportunity, and paste the order information from SAP into Salesforce. The other way around with other apps. Yeah, so this is really some manual repetitive work which is ongoing. And you can imagine we are living in an ever-changing world. Agile and DevOps are on a daily menu. You cannot use these concepts anymore. So you have to be, you have to have the right pace in order to provide innovation. So this is where companies are slowing down because every human has a uh, if I'm in a good mood today, I will perform well. If I'm not in a good mood, so I will not perform well. So this is speed is playing a major role as well as the human error parameter, um, which is always given. Um, and for me, professional or being a part of the business, I'm doing this repetitive, tedious work. Yeah? So from the labor cost perspective, this is also something which is having high cost uh, which need to be improved um, also in the time where you know you have to look into productivity and that's how and why RPA was born and it was born around about 15 to 20 years where the human or the, this person is doing repetitive work which we can define yeah it's exactly uh, uh, write it down what this person is doing so what they did is let's replace this activities what the person is doing with a, an rpa was born now, this was really where you can then uh, define all these steps using rpa bots and like in a one-to-one -one manner the human uh, was doing something in sap so the bot will do exactly the same thing in sap no change no improvement in the process and this is how rpa has been evolving over years and still it is in the same manner rpa on a graphical user interface so how does rpa work so if we identify in our organization there is a business process i need to automate who is identifying it it's really someone from business because they have the pain with the repetitive work they want to improve they want to improve their productivity and efficiency so they know exactly what the business process is about but they cannot yeah so they need specialized skill set which you can of course learn but there is a, a technical requirement in order to do rpa automation uh, user interface automation where you need to have a place so business cannot do it on this as they need to have these skill set mainly a rpa developer next to them and then business will tell them look in this process which we want to automate i am going into sap into order management getting the order number going into salesforce copying in the opportunity and then going into microsoft and copying the opportunity invoice or wherever yeah? so rpa dev said okay this is good i understand let's do one-to-one -one automation in the same manner it it's the um, activities which business showed to the RPA developer and then it's automated. 
of course production you have to test it out we are talking about real data productive data so you need to make sure that this process becomes stable and put it into production and this is there's also one rule when you are looking into rpa you say um, the more or the often a process runs the stable it is right so you can record and uh, design a process but you will run it 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 will fail because it could happen that, that the application you have automated is behaving in the second execution differently than uh, so you need to make sure that this is stable and running and then you put it into production one week into production the business team is happy because have less work to do or can be more productive and uh, no more repetitive work but then the sap teams comes up and say change in the order management module deploy a transport into sap boom the automated process will fail what will happen the rpa is going to get this notification look your deployed process failed but he looks into the error messages and understand that there is something we identified but does not know why it fails. So he need to have a business person to explain him, look, the process has changed. We have added new ad required fields, additional screen has been added. So you have to uh, adjust the UI automated script. There's already a communication overflow which is happening currently in the market. So they sit together, fix it, redeploy it. And then that's not everything as it in production. Uh, business need to manually execute and clean up the data which crashed in production. Yeah? So this is the state information. Um, when we put this on a graph, yeah, the investment in RPA driven automation, what we see currently in the market, we got, uh, you know, we are having uh, daily meetings with prospects and customers and they are confirming it. So when we put into one graph, which is on the uh, y axis uh, representing the effort and cost and the time on the x axis so this performing repetitive work over time at some point you decide to introduce rpa based automation we have seen it what you need to have first of all rpa skills so you need to hire a rpa developer minimum you need to make sure that the bot this is a super important point especially when you look into rpa automation the RPA bot is going to use S. Okay, you need to install the bot on a Windows machine, on a client machine, but also for SAP, you need to assign licenses for the RPA. Same for Salesforce, because the bot is going to use the UI to log in into all these various uh, business apps. So you need to assign licenses so the bot can really log in and use it. And then you have to deploy it basically together with your IT security. And then you have introduced RPA driven automation. And this effort from the business won't just go down. It will further the effort on the business side because now business need to teach the new role how to automate. They have to understand on the technology, on the UI automation, but they don't understand the process. So here business need to uh, invest some time. They may see but we are living in a very agile world where ui changes are happening on daily basis it's quite fragile so business need to support in order to understand the error message but also business need to support in order to build new automation yeah because they are not owning it they are providing the information to the rpa developer to automate it so it's something you have built and you can look into your organization and who has deployed rpa driven automation they will see this cumbersome rpa where you have automation running but you are investing kind of an effort to keep it up and running yeah? so you have started to serve the automation and when you compare to the manual effort you had now you are in even more from the cost perspective from the people perspective so you have just shifted the work from repetitive work now in serving automation and keeping it alive because maybe you have introduced it into your organization and you don't want to make it fail so you invest and serve it furthermore and so this is what i say this is already a fail and i want to pause here for a second to uh, uh, to ask in the round if there are any questions any comments on 
Yeah, Amir, um, one question I have is, um, I have tried to play with this RPA tool. Um, so that is, I mean, it, it's kind of very cumbersome. You have to install so many things and, and it, it's not a cool way of, um, let's say I'm a beginner and I just want to learn something. And it, it's really uh, not easy process. I mean, is Millsoft planning on doing something on putting on a cloud or something like where we don't have to install anything? This is something, you know, um, I cannot disclose. I'm also not the right person, but there are initiatives going on, discussion going on, uh, how to improve this, uh, especially the installation of the bots and so on. So I cannot disclose any information, um, but there is something going on on our side, yeah. Sorry that I, uh, I'm i limited yeah, yeah, that's fine. answer. I thought you have some more information because you're cl cl working closely with Millsoft. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, this is Jitendra. I have a question. Maybe like, you know, yeah. so let's consider like we have already have any point platform like Millsoft and a lot of APIs are running, right? Can, can we use RPA, like uh, robotic process automation or some kind of bots which can monitor the APIs, like, you know, which is running in the cloud hub or maybe in uh, some, like, maybe in some data center, right? Can we use those, like, you know? or like, can awesome. we extend, can we extend the RPA capability to monitor those, like, API, like, it's, so I'm not talking about simple monitoring, like, API status up, like, you know, like, can we catch some kind of, like, if some kind of business logic is continuous failing, right? So those kind of things. Yes, so for instance, uh, you see, okay, uh, API is stuck. Yeah, so now you have to open the ticket to the IT team to look into the API and see what is going on there. Uh, and then the IT team will go through a checklist of uh, to see, okay, uh, is the API up and running? Is uh, what failures are coming in? Checking basically a checklist. So these kind of things, um, we have customers who are looking into exactly these kind of uh, automation uh, using RPA, where the bot sees a notification, uh, uh, an API is not responding, so it will log into um, any point platform, uh, control plane, management console, and then really do these checks instead of someone from IT admin looking into the checklist. This could be, for instance, done. To and there is, are a lot of uh, flexibility you can cover in terms of logic, uh, the way you want to operate with these kind of monitoring uh, enhancements. A bot can, of course, do it, right? Or, or maybe in future we can extend, like, to fix some of the issues automatically using this RPA, right? Maybe, like, let's consider my service bot stop or we can use some kind of RPA bot that can start the service or restart the service, right? Exactly. Yes. These are the topics where customers are also looking into. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, man, quick question. <clears throat> so what is the difference between the older business process automations like the Acologic uh, uh, PPM uh, versus the RPA uh, process? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can I hear you. I, I pressed the wrong uh, button. Sorry. Can I'm you sorry. repeat the question? Yeah, my mistake. So, yeah, no issues. So, uh, thanks, Samira. I know I could see your postings, you know, in the uh, LinkedIn and everything. It's really wonderful. Just curious. I know this is more uh, similar to the uh, uh, business process automation tools which we used to have uh, a decade back, like you know, Oracle, uh, Aqualogic BPM tools, uh, JBPM tools, kind of thing. But those were not enhanced in those times. How it did. RPA uh, automation process, and uh, is it uh, a replacement to the human uh, uh, activities, human uh, uh, workflow activities? That's a very good and question. Can, I, can can we try to park it? Because you know, currently what we see here on the screen is the status quo on the market. It has nothing to do yet with the MuleSoft offering. This is just how other RPA vendors are struggling and with you know with automation itself rpa ah. is something which becomes cumbersome because it is um, it is linked to many ui dependencies and changes then rpa will fail so this is what we are seeing in the market as investment put into rpa drive automation initiatives which 
if you would search for RPA failing projects, you will see that every second RPA project is failing. And that, that's why I believe is the right uh -huh. way to consider and reframe the automation. And that's why MuleSoft is entering it. And now show you the MuleSoft way, then I would um, like to uh, ask you back if it is clear what so, MuleSoft is providing. Sure. Good. Amir, you. Amir, are you saying the leaders in RPA like Blue Prism, UiPath, um, don't have a better uh, solution than MuleSoft? Um, I think we are not competing with them with the automation offering we are providing because we are taking it from a completely different point of view. So they have been grown up and I don't, I will not tell any names, but you know, the RPA mark has been grown up with bots. So everything you will see in the market is driven through bot and a bot you can see requires process. A bot requires dedicated uh, skill set, a dedicated deployment, which need to be there. A bot even requires a UI license for SAP. A bot requires a UI license for ServiceNow, for Salesforce, and so on. This is a given, you know, given fact. The automation has been growing in the RPA market. So we are providing a completely different point. We are going to share just in a minute. Um, but this is what we see on the on the market happening right now. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, makes sense. Um, thank you. Welcome. So sure, I think it's better. Let's continue and see how we can reframe the automation. Right. So we have been reframing point to point connection. You remember the API led system process experience layer, really bringing the community into uh, an enterprise or into an organization to make them more sustainable and future proof. And the same approach we made automation itself. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. This is my personal mantra. Um, automation should be serving humans, not the other way around. So, and if you uh, capture the graph, which I was just showing, uh, you will see that it's like you have shifted the work from repetitive work now into really serving your automation, keeping your automation alive. And this is where I say automation uh, the moment you start serving automation, your journey has failed. So it should be more stable. Help you free up uh, limited resources on the business side so you can stay. And this is what we want. And in order to solve it, we have to understand the sphere of automation, which is involving on a very high level, different kind of interfaces, right? Uh, UI and API layers, so headless, let's refer to API like headless and UI is really front end layer. This appeals to different kind of users, right? Business is tend to work with UIs because this is their day-to-day -day business. They understand it, easier relate to it, while as technical people, they would do activities on a, on a technical side using these protocols, using these which are available just to process uh, faster. So there are benefits in using it. Yeah? But this person, they don't have the skill set to use a REST API to connect to Salesforce or to ServiceNow or to Gmail. So they would love to be faster, but they cannot do it. There's a limitation in terms of technology. So what our primary to is to decouple the technology for non-technical people so they can relate back it in a business readable way and they can contribute and own automation on their self to automate repetitive work on their daily table, right? And the moment you have a full understanding what is out of really not compare, it's a, you know, it's a mix. You will always use both things but there is benefit first of all the headless the api side at any point in place it's with the connectivity pre-built connectors and the any point studio it's really 10 times faster than building rp i'm pretty sure many of you have already tried to build rpa process it requires a technical understanding it requires a uh, it requires an effort to build these processes because you have to click 
UI path, while as in API, you just connect to the system, do basically the same, but in a headless mode. So here you are 10 times faster than and what is even more impressive is you are 30 times minimum faster in execution. And I've done here many, many tests where I will uh, opportunity in Salesforce using a RPA bot and then via Composer or uh, any point. It was really super for SAP. All the creation, all the to cache scenario from UI can take up to five to 10 minutes. While PI, it's going to be super fast within one minute, you're done. And this is a huge, huge advantage in terms of execution because it has been there. Yeah, but these are the challenges we are trying to solve, becoming more efficient, becoming more productive, and really save here on the operational side. And if you look into the other capabilities, what APIs are there, so whenever you start a pro or start a project where you build something, the first things you build and mock are APIs. And now imagine the process you have team, if they could just consume and yeah, consume the mocks already in the automation. If they could consider to use the API at a very early stage, you will really transform into a hyper automation company because then you're tying back the process to headless first. And if headless is not possible, you go with uh, UI. On the other side, of course, UIs are available in the life cycle once API implementations are done. APIs can run everywhere, but as a bot, and this is the challenges the R are having. It requires a client-side installation. And you will see that all these vendors are growing now into API capabilities. So they are API capabilities. But if you look closer, you will identify that these APIs, which they offer, you still need to have in order to run these APIs, right? So you need to have a reserved machine on Windows to execute an API call. In our side, it's like APIs can run everywhere. Yeah, so this is the main difference when you would like to compare vendors which are in the market with MuleSoft. MuleSoft has been growing in the system integration space and API space, while as the rest or the automation has been growing in, the, in a more client side installation and bot way of doing things. Um, so this is this and also changes more frequently. UIs changes more frequently if namings are not correct, right? If layout is not correct, this is all uh, this is all affecting the UI automation, which is done to RPA, and that's why you should is available within an ecosystem. And what can you use? And the moment you understand exactly where to get started, it's the UI first automation approach. Start with headless. Headless is everything which is happening in the background. This is like connectivity, you can, um, connect to SAP using connectors, you can connect to Salesforce, true APIs, true uh, ODBC, or to us, FTP. All this can be done in the background. It's much faster and easier to consume. Yeah. So here just there to get started for all modern application, I say, go always with API first. Evaluate if they are not providing intelligent and of course you can consider the UI automation, but always evaluate the API first automation. And if the possibility is given for it, automate using APIs. So how are we changing the way in automation? Today requires RPA skills, right? So what we see is we first want to understand who mainly it's uh, we say here business but it can be any user anywhere in your organization independently if they are happy to automate or not so there's this is like anyone who is interested to automate their day-to-day -day repetitive work so they need automation technical roles they are there to support these uh, personas and the way we are looking at it is Let's say this is a process involving four steps. You are creating something in Salesforce, going to NetSuite, Slack, and then creating a ticket in Jira. With our center for enablement process, where we had this 
production stream and the consumption stream to enable the organization to become more composable already through the api led mindset but stay the composability this is today even more important for automation to really serve these issues with the changing uis and business to become more productive the first thing is always to evaluate mules of composer mules of composer is the tool for people who do not uh, want to become more into technology they want to just automate their day to day work their business apps so this is something with this scenario four steps different applications business can do it on their self they don't need to have over third person to help them automate it this is also solving the communication overflow where today rpa developer is leading the automation they are owning it and business need to always go to them and ask for changes support them here they can do it on their self at least at least from the um, available business applications we are providing to composer this is just point and click automation so where does the rest fit in so now imagine additional step where you say okay now this business process need to transfer data to ftp so ftp is a composer does not provide any connectivity to it, to it so what we have recently released is the sharing between any point platform and composer so what they will do is first of all they will evaluate it has already created something for F if not they will request it to create something for ftp automation so it will create it and just share the dedicated api composer. so it's available as a shared api from any point into composer complete from json technology aspects are decoupled in a readable manner and this is where then business can start using all the api mongodb oracle or whatever you have already available as part of your api economy you can reuse in composer and con automation so let's imagine you say okay now there is an app Microsoft is not providing any connect the interfaces are also super complex what is the solution for a mainframe application a system which is not providing any api and we believe that this is the right use case for rpa addressing the last mile to automation for different use cases for unstructured data imaging pdfs where you have unstructured data available and imagine it's 80 to 90 percent of data within any organization is unstructured through laying and hiding into various documents so if data and process it into your systems that would really bring a big change also for systems which are not providing any no apis legacy applications client server apps and also maybe you have an application which has apis but super difficult to use make it easy do it with ui automation and Microsoft is providing with rpa a tool which can basically help you automate any ui it doesn't really focus on legacy applications only or web application you can do anything uh, with mules of rpa but this is the case addressing the last mile of automation and also differentiate uh, with what is going on today so api first development we have been going up there but now api first automation is the way to go so the moment you see okay there is an application without any interface get in touch with your rpa developer with the automation team and they will make this automation happen on the ui level and then just provide you the build block so you can compose it and reuse it in composer um, and just benefit from it so now you are able to get a flow which is involving not only business apps but also apps which are in the back end for you and uh, functionality which is in the back end and, okay. and empowering you as a user to go beyond what is happening and this is in a production and consume concept you know better than me so this is where automation also perfectly fits in now with the dedicated tools and solutions what i also want to highlight is this approach where composer is first of all acting as an orchestrator um, having the building blocks in use for the 
business automation flows, reducing the technical capacity, uh, technical complexity and the technical debt. Because now imagine you have built automation just dedicated in a building block like a Lego block and you share it with Composer and in Composer you put these Lego blocks together, they are a game, right? So you cannot call or you should not be calling from this API uh, RPA bot, which again calls another R calls another API and this is used here. So, you know, it, it is still having this technical complexity. So I advise it, do it in a building block, just capture the functionality, share it in Composer as a step and do the passing within Composer through these steps to really process the data in a way which is more sustainable. And here again, I want to pause, ask in the round also in regards of the questions, how MuleSoft is doing it differently. So we are not replacing RPA completely, right? So we I think these three capabilities as an offering to MuleSoft automation and really making the conveyed automation is a team sport. And now I would pause for a second. Um, Amir, I have a question. Uh, if I'm audible to you. Yes. Please. Yes. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. So uh, if you look at this uh, left hand side where we have this integration uh, with the Mule RPA bot. Um, wherein you're talking about the mainframe. Um, if you could just reiterate that logic, because um, integration with mainframe can also be achieved in any one platform. So uh, when we are calling about Mule um, RPA bot here, and I, I can pretty much understand the right-hand side where we can do the FTP using our APIs on any point platform, perfect. But I just want to understand when we're doing this uh, um, mainframe integration, I'll be talking of UI-based automation specifically for mainframe if you could just reiterate that logic that will be helpful the question you know and i think there is an overlapping you are 100 percently right and i fully agree here you we have this connectivity provided for mainframe yeah i have been Thank using you. it and in some cases this is perfect uh, the great fit but we are not supporting all kind of mainframe applications so exactly for those who won't find anything in any point platform only then you know the the way it works this is the first step the second step again we are AI based approach and then the last mile to automation if you say okay we have a mainframe application we can unlock with any point okay it's all you know even this can be then shared here through but there might be mainframe application which we cannot structures and data we cannot touch through uh, via our interfaces and those you can address with in with a ui automation um, but also other use cases like here documents, right? So PDF documents, of course, there are different APIs. I've been seeing those, but it's much, much easier to capture it via OCR, read system generated PDF and extract the text and process it with RPA. But for mainframe, you're absolutely right. If it is available through any point, go always with API first. It's not possible to unlock using any point, go with MuleSoft RPA. Does it make just, sense? Just, uh, yeah, it does. It does answer the question. Um, out of curiosity, uh, if we have the COBOL copy book uh, from the mainframe, just going a little bit more technical here. So uh, if we have the COBOL copy book, uh, uh, is there any way of uh, utilizing that in, in the Mule RPA bot? Uh, only via UI interfaces or if you can read this copy book elements via text, only then, but it's mainly UI, yeah. UI, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so you'll be probably um, uh, touching upon that feature uh, maybe as we move ahead, probably. It'll be interesting to know. Yeah, so in RPA, definitely we are going to uh, go a bit deeper. I don't know what we have planned, but um, from the demo point of view, I can show you how you can build your own bot on uh, UI level. Yeah? Perfect. Thanks, Thanks, Amit. That answers my question, yeah. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, so let's put this, you know, it's again something where I'm going to use the same graph, effort, cost, and time. Business is having repetitive work. We introduced automation. Now, automation really in sense of 
the user who needs automation. It's not only business, you know, it could be a business technologist who will drive this automation in initiatives. It's not really by yeah. automation or IT team. So you are handing over, introducing first of all automation. What you need to have now with the mules of concept, we are coming from a different point of view. We have a dedicated use case where to use RPA. So the RPA skill set requirements will decrease all according to that. Also the bot requirements will decrease. You may have an increased requirements in uh, case of sharing API, reusing it, building even API using any point, but the majority will then happen on the business side. So it won't directly go down with MuleSoft automation first need to or business users need to understand that they are owning automation so here is a enablement uh, time where the consuming composer to build their automation flows with the help of the IT team and the automation things and really getting into this automation scene and owning it so first of all what you are completely getting rid of is the communication of if business need to change the flow the order of the steps, they can do it on their self. They don't need to have a RPA developer they go to and then further continue. So these technical roles are there to support them in case of failures, if a flow is crashing, uh, IT and the RPA team, why my process failed? I see this is the error message. So for those kind of things, yes, they can still get the support, but they are automation and driving the automation and we see in from the previous experience in system integration and api management that this has been very successful so if you compare it with the manual continuation of the repetitive work at some point this could be in a year in two years in three in six months based on how much you want to automate and how large your company is you will get this break even and this break even the time and cost saving where you can then really accelerate towards innovation because you have built upon a sustainable automation foundation. Any questions so far? All right, so let's just quickly see the benefits. You know, it's really, this is a automation is providing. Uh, which in some cases is still unrealized, but we believe this is the right approach to address automation. You're decreasing the technical complexity and technical depth with this building block mindset on every technology layer, APIs, RPAs, APIs to, uh, to uh, the economy, and then you, there you can reuse it and uh, make it discoverable for one in your organization. So if you have automated something with RPA, for a legacy application, you publish it into Exchange and it's coverable for everyone. So if I want to automate the same thing, I will research and find that it has been already there so I can reuse it. Yeah? It's more efficient, productive, and of course we can reduce the cost for it and build upon a resilient layer, uh, which will be then the future proof. So I've been talking now a lot. Let's go into the technical part introduction information you have been hearing from the analyst as well so you know two years ago rpa was hype a big thing gartner completely on rpa now if you read the analyst reports it's all about hyper out so it's changing the way uh, automation was perceived a few years ago and this is where musoft is also now head providing the right capabilities to help organization to start the hyper automation journey by more with less resources, of course, also enabling the teams which are within an organization to pull together. Because at the end of the day, hyper automation is about capabilities and organization can evolve and build already like API management. So there might be a team which is great in API management. You have other teams which are great in connecting system, integrating. There are others who can easily work with chatbots. AI teams are there. You have ML teams, other teams on the RPA side. You know, these are all organization capabilities which you can bring together and drive a successful 
automation journey. This is what hyper automation is about getting aware about your capabilities and using it towards automation. And this is what MuleSoft is providing to uh, you with the MuleSoft out these three capabilities we have and you can put it and bring it in context to Salesforce, then it becomes really massive because with out environments and the Salesforce flow engine, we can do much, much more towards hyper automation, integrating chatbots like Einstein and really drive the automation journey, not only upon APIs and Composer and RPA, but going beyond it, attaching it uh, insights and uh, business activities. This makes it super powerful. And the components, of course, news of comp of the. So it's my favorite tool. It's a no-code solution which allows you to instantly connect to any application, reuse things what you have been building on platform, unlock uh, data and system, and just automate the data flow across business application. What might be very your uh, business users or users in general who are having repetitive work on every day morning, they have to sit and invest, do some kind of work. This can be automated. And here Composer is super easy to use and helps really building these kind of automation. The next one is, of course, MuleSoft RPA. This is the second capability of the MuleSoft automation solution any process for any team based upon any UI. I had my dedicated view where I suggested legacy environments, but we have seen customers, they had web application, maybe a bit traditional web application, which are not providing the more, you know, easy with APIs. They continue to do automation on a UI. Even if it's a web application, it's not legacy or new web application, which are provided it's difficult to use, go with UI automation. Yeah? It's also a completely secured platform enabling end-to-end -end automation and patched and seamlessly integrated to Salesforce uh, 360 together with Anypoint Platform and Composer. So RPA is the second cap. And of course, where everything fails, we have still Anypoint in the background to enable teams to uh, unlock the truth upon automation, innovate faster with all these pre-built connectors we are having um, and really do it in a secured and there is no mismatch between IT and business team. Do it in a collaborative approach and share your knowledge across the line. So again, I want to pause here for a second if the capabilities are clear. Because now we will become more technical. So um, I mean, just questions in general. Yep, please, please, yeah, please. yeah, just one question uh, regarding integration. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, that you know uh, we can tie this all together because the uh, organization of the customer might already have an AI or ML team, right? So just want to understand um, in Mule. If I build a Mule RPA bot and I want to integrate with the AI or ML uh, open source libraries, which they might be leveraging, is API finding those um, algorithms the only way to integrate with AI logic in the bot or is there any other out-of-the-box uh, feature available? So currently in the AI which will be uh, with uh, API which will be help you to integrate with these AI capabilities. Out of the box we don't have any yet in uh, RPA of course we are again evaluating here different uh, streams uh, to leverage um, not there. Yeah? But what I also suggest is we have the Salesforce platform and if you as an organization are using already the Salesforce, you have kind of intelligence, rule-based intelligence you can consume and now with Genie you can even go further into analytics and so on. Um, but out of the box within MuleSoft RPA there is no AI capability. You have to unlock it through API connect. Of course it's possible with uh, MuleSoft RPA. Uh, we cannot directly call a library, right? Uh, or, a, or a Java piece of code, which might be, uh, um, you know, you have these open source AI libraries or function, functions. Is there a feature of consuming those? Um, I'm not talking about Einstein. Um, maybe, you know, something that's okay. open source AI. <laughs> okay, so I think it would, it would make sense if we, because I think there you will find the answer how it oh, okay. technically relates. 
So basically, when we look at this box, it's representing the Microsoft Automation Suite. And I will not pick all the relevant part you know from any point platform, but this is what you know, right? So these are um, the any point pieces you know, the design time here on studio where you can use different kind of connectors to connect to any application you can call java classes and so on this is given right whenever you build a any point flow you deploy it into a mule runtime this could be anywhere in cloud hub on a private cloud fabric so this is something you know already and then you can of course publish all these built assets in exchange so now this is what you over the years, we are introducing two additional components. First of all, RPA, and I've mapped it in a way which reflects it very of any point. So you can see for RPA, we are also providing a design time. Yeah? So we have uh, two components. It's RPA recorder, just a screen capture and activity recorder where you press on record and then go through a website and will capture every mouse and keystroke for you so you can yeah, see how the process looks like. And in RPA, it's not very similar. It's quite the same kind of tool like any point studio where you build UI you know, and you build upon various kind of technologies with screen scraping, uh, using um, application hooks and web hooks to automate uh, the different applications then you have of course a bot farm you can relate a mule runtime where you deploy something and you have a rpa manager which is also kind of mule any point management where which is also doing kind of uh, deployment so here it works a bit differently so first of all of course you have any I will come to it uh, again. The design is happening in cloud, and we have the management console also in cloud. But how with RPA, it's where whenever you build a process, you save it first of all in the RPA manager, and you can then from there deploy it based upon scheduling on the RPA bot farm. And this bot farm has to be a Windows machine. Yeah? Same for the designer, it has to be a Windows of course can be deployed on a private cloud environment but the bots need to be a windows machine so these processes which you automate here the bot farm are assigned to dedicated bots which are running it in a scheduled manner and uh, just executing it yeah. so now is also having an embedded uh, runtime but it's not comparable with any point platform so you build your flows online and you deploy it and uh, it's deployed in the cloud and you can use different connectors uh, for rpa or business application even you can call and just build your flows and do it yeah and the way it's interacting with rpa is through the rpa bot you have here you can trigger via any point uh, via MuleSoft Composer and it will execute step on a bot farm. And you have also the option and this makes it more powerful now connecting the missing piece to any point. Everything you build upon RPA UI automation, you can publish as a API in any point exchange. This is like a building block where you are now not anymore concentrating on a scheduled timeline where, where let's say a every night at 9 p.m and doing the same uh, repetitive work no you are you are opening it up and providing api so this automation process is published in exchange and everyone who has access to exchange they can uncover it and the available in exchange you can load it as a connector in a any point studio and deploy it basically onto your from the runtime it will do a http call and execute you the bot directly in uh, the bot farm to the question asked um, about the java library uh, so you have these java library capabilities available in any point uh, and call rpa bots uh, from any point to trigger something pass parameters uh, and so on and you can do it vice versa from also from Composer, you can reuse these shared APIs, which you publish basically here in Exchange and execute it on runtime. Or a HTTP call, 
to consume maybe this specific Java class and then get the input and output and then further continue in RPA itself. Yeah? So you can combine and mix and match uh, the way you like. But as we have seen before in the conceptual point of view slide, do it to reduce the technical depth and complexity. We are offering these capabilities, but do it in a more you know, healthy manner. Otherwise, you can get lost if you call here API, call the bots, uh, composer calls the bot. You can really build it more complex. So align it more to the building blocks. This is the way to go. And you can build it. You can build AI into it using open source AIs. I think you are open AI capabilities. So these kind of things, you can make it happen. Technology-wise, it would work. And again, just reiterate if it is more clear now with the Java classes and the AI calls. Yes, yes, Samir. Thanks for that. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions? So in the, in the RPA manager, what you have, I mean, that's what can be called from the MuleSoft composer. Is it is it a is it an API? What is that to yeah? This one call to the RPA bot, which you basically make available outside of RPA manager. Yeah? So basically a bot or automated process, you deploy this process into the runtime. And these processes are running on schedule basic. The moment you say this bot or this automation process, which I've created, I want to create an invocable API for it. So it will become available side of the RPA solution, which it again can uh, use Composer. So you have a connector in Composer to connect RPA instances and use these published uh, automated process to call from Composer. By so if you want to, yeah. if you want to uh, compare with any point studio, is it a runtime or an API manager? Uh, you. Yeah, a RPA manager. If, if if I have to do a comparison, is it a runtime in, in MuleSoft? RPA manager is more like, runtime? no, it's uh, the control plane. RPA manager, you can map to the any point platform in the, so the oh, bot plane, engine okay. is more like the runtime. So the bot farm, so each of these RPA bot can be re as, um, a mule app or mule runtime, I think it's easier. Mule runtime, and um, this process here is can be mapped to any point studio. So RPA builder can be mapped to any point studio. The bot runtime can be bot mapped to mule runtime, and a manager can be mapped to the management console of uh, any point if you would map it. Oh, in the similar lines. Um, where this RPA manager will be residing in the Cloud Hub if I get by a small application to test it? Where it resides in Cloud Hub, you mean? Yep. It Where is, is deployed. So RPA manager is in Cloud Hub. So this part you will uh, have is provided from MuleSoft. Yeah. The RPA oh, bot okay. farm. It's not something we are providing as a thing. So it means this is something you have to establish on your side, either in a private cloud, as mentioned here, or on a VM where, uh, which need to communicate then with the RPA manager. So this is something which is on customer side, side and not managed as a service. Uh, okay. Hey, I mean, I mean, yeah. Uh, is the bot in RPA manager can be accessible uh, to uh, from any other legacy of applications like Java or web application or something like that? The bot itself, if it can be passed through a uh, application, you mean? Yeah. So here we are seeing that uh, it can be called from a like you know uh, uh, Microsoft Composer, right? So. Uh, like, let's take this no use of composer. I want to uh, call uh, like an access this bot from RPA manager from any .NET or any uh, Java applications. Is that possible? 
So let me reiterate the question. Uh, huh? So we, I have the same understanding. So instead of composer calling the bot, you want another application to call the bot, correct? Right. Right. Yes. Yes. So it's a HTTP call you need to fire against a dedicated huh. resource um, where you can do it via Postman as well. So you can trigger, you know, via this HTTP call, this bot. And we have a quite detailed as well on our MuleSoft documentation page. So you can do it, but the requirements are you need to call the HTTP uh, call. Yeah? So. Okay, yeah, thanks. Welcome. So let's quickly also see how all this works as part of the Salesforce ecosystem. Uh, I, we need to look into we are a salesforce company and i think there is huge benefit especially when we get used to the automation requirements or we want to grow towards the hyper automation requirement and the organizations they are having already salesforce with einstein with the chatbots and so on then it becomes really powerful and the way we integrate uh, with uh, salesforce is via salesforce flow so that Salesforce is providing this automation ecosystem called Salesforce Flow with different components where you can build the flows itself in drop manner, uh, change the experience, read the data from Salesforce fields and manipulate it and trigger further uh, events and build your flows uh, diagrams here. Um, you have flow orchestration where you can then orchestrate these flows with each other passing you can call flows from Slack or build your custom uh, actions. Uh, we are now extending this flow uh, portfolio with flow integration, aka Composer, and flow RPA, aka MuleSoft, uh, MuleSoft RPA. This is part now of the Salesforce flow portfolio. What does it mean? It's part of it. It's seamlessly integrated into the sales system and um, it doesn't mean that if you are entitled to use flow you have these two components no you have to get the entitlement but it's seamlessly integrated into the salesforce flow portfolio and this is the way it is working so basically we have seen the suite and everything is centered around the anypoint exchange of course you can write an apex code to call the bots here right so this is a no-brainer it it's gonna work uh, seamlessly but the easier way to do it everything which is in exchange you can connect your any point platform with your salesforce environment and organization so everything you have published can be securely be used in the tool of um, salesforce flow builder and from here you can drag and drop these capabilities directly into uh, salesforce flow and organize your own flow orchestration and build upon what the APIs and MuleSoft Automation Suite is unlocking for you and you as ecosystem with all the capabilities it is providing. All right. I think this is an overloaded slide. Sorry for that, but I didn't found any easier way to represent it. Here on this. So, um... RPA recorder, RPA builder, and the RPA bot form is something a standalone, right? The client has to have this. Yes, this is something which is standalone and need to be set up on your organization infrastructure. And currently it's only supported at Windows. Yes, it is uh, currently only supported for Windows. So you need to have a Windows operator in order to run these components. Is, is it a demo following or is it? it... Yeah, yes, we will see it in a demo. Is any clients are using right now in production? Any big clients yes. are using in production? Yes, so we have, um, you know, we have not built this RPA solution by ourselves. So we have acquired a company. I think it was more than a year ago, uh, a German company who was providing innovation in the RPA market. And, you know, they had this RPA capital. 
So we have acquired them, cloudified the uh, whole solution, integrated into Cloud Hub uh, and from the infrastructure point, and then modernized also you know, these kind of sharing capabilities between the tools uh, and make it more appealing to the Mule software of working. So this is something which we have acquired and uh, we, they, this company had customers already in Germany, Switzerland, few in Asia, I think one, two also in the US. So they are using it in production uh, and these are like financial organizations, insurances, hospitals even, oh, okay. used uh, to replace repetitive and uh, tedious tasks. So there are people using into production too. Those uh, organizations have also now renewed into the mule software of working. Yeah? So they are extending to mule software. It was called Service Trace uh, X1, the solution here, the, the middle one. Um, so now they are opening up and re renewing their contracts to MuleSoft Automation because this, what you see here, makes sense uh, and helps them to further increase the productivity and efficiency. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question. Uh, can this uh, RPA, uh, the whole ecosystem, can be bought without uh, uh, MuleSoft? Uh, composer and also Salesforce, right? Just Mulesoft. Can we bought oh, that's a Great question. Um, so what we are selling is right, this automation suite is being, set, being sold. So the way we are selling it is we are selling automation credit. So with the base package, whatever the price is, the right guy to talk about it, you get a number of automation credits. And here is the thing. The automation credits can be used with hundreds of bots you install, one bot you install, with Composer only, with RPA only. It's completely uh, you mix and match and use these credits for the capabilities is free to you to use. Um, you can use it on a and just use this capability. You can combine. It's free of uh, decision. Yeah? So up to you how you use it end title for the Muse of Automation Suite, you get automation credit and you can decide if you want to use the full suite, half of it or only RPA. Does okay, it make so sense to you? This, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, if we bought like uh, uh, this suite, then it is up to us how to design the things, right? So yes. That means, that means the composer and also the exchange will be available for like, you know, uh, for the company, right? Yes. So you can start with RPA and you say, okay, this is where we are going to start. And then you identify how the composer can do better, where you can use any point to unlock further, then you can use it and uh, add it to your automation suite. If we start using all the fleet, then we need to have that skill set, right? So that's a, that's a reason. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Amir, I, I have a question. Um, so um, this looks pretty uh, well explained. Basically, you have a composer, you have RPA suit, and then you have any point exchange for your APIification integration. Now, into this mix, we are adding the Salesforce ecosystem, integrating this whole um, automation suit with um, Salesforce. Um, I'm just trying to understand here, we have this flow builder. Um, we already have the composer, which pretty much uh, is able to, you know, um, start up. A, a trigger a source and then orchestrate it, uh, integrate it with RPA and also do some API invocations. And it's like, you know, no code, low code kind of a thing. Um, I'm just trying to understand this flow builder um, in this whole context. A couple of questions here. First of all, um, if I look at this context here, it's just more of a any point exchange integration with Salesforce ecosystem. And mm -hmm. it could be any other system also. It could be SAP or anything else as well, right? Is that correct? Exactly. Or spe yes. specifically that, that, for this. That's correct. That, that's correct. But the integration, you know, the integration from any point uh, into the Salesforce org is something which is provided for Salesforce only. But this automation suite, you can integrate into SAP, you integrate into a custom built framework. It does not need to be Salesforce. This is just, as we are a Salesforce company, I've added this for you to be aware that this is the possibilities towards Salesforce, but this can be any other 
uh, vendor as well where you can use interfaces to get the data and just connect it into your uh, environment. Does it, does it require licenses uh, to make this integration happen with the Salesforce? Um, because I think you made a point in the very beginning, if I'm trying to relate with that, that uh, you'll need the licenses of either Salesforce or uh, SAP for the UI integration. So here, if I understand correct, this is API integration, right? Uh, it's not talking yes. about UI integration. API integration. So the bots which will be called here. Yeah? So if this bot is now going into, uh, so here logging into SAP, of course, this bot which is running here need to have a SAP license to log in into SAP. Like a SAP environment or a Salesforce environment, and this bot is just logging into a legacy environment. Yeah? So you are not using any sales license. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And and what is the value add of having this um, flow builder specifically? Can you just give any analogy or um, example for that? The, the flow builder is like the automation ecosystem of Salesforce. Everything you see in CRM, in service cloud, in sales, mar marketing or commerce, you know, you can control with flow builder. Yeah, like you, when the, a user creates a new opportunity, there's event happening. You can catch on flow builder and say, okay, if this event happened, I want to trigger a flow. And then this flow can be orchestrated, which is like RPA and APIs where you can do calls to external systems. And the benefit or the value here is you are using standard components which are not coded so no custom code is involved here these rpa bots or the apis have been built in soft and they can easily be consumed within the salesforce flow to further integrate the salesforce service cloud into an uh, or a custom application uh, you don't need to code this yeah? so this is basically where you are reducing the implementation and make it more standard Right, it's less similar to something like a business process automation uh, within within Salesforce ecosystem. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that answers my question, Amir. Thank you. Uh, Amir, can we call the flow builder from the any point? Mm, I've never tried it. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. You can call a flow in any point but i remember you can call a flow in slack or from slack you can call so basically there would be a technology interface where this can happen but i never uh, so basically just rough roughly guessing yes you if you can call it from slack you should call it externally yeah. All right, um, team, sorry, you know, um, we have 40 minutes left and I have still some things to show you and um, yeah, go through what is, if you don't mind, can we continue with the demo so you get a feeling, okay, this is what could be reflected. Out of yeah. This is how yes, it yes, looks like. That's, that's, that's what we're all excited to see, please. Sure, yeah, so yes. here. And one thing, you know, um, just talking about the automation flow, maybe we can, I, my plan was to show you Composer, but I think the request is more to work. We can reframe it and we can say we build a bot, yeah, a RPA bot and show you how it works. Does it make sense? All right, so the first two are just, you know, real world examples which we have been built as a demo. Um, I will be just demonstrating it to you and then we will go into step-by-step step how we have done the automation on a UI side. So the first case is about a company called NTO. Many of you have seen this demo. I've presented it in various different uh, meters, but um, it's about a retail company who is selling outdoor articles, merchandise, sport, online through a web shop and they have a very loyal customer rachel rachel is uh, having a great experience in the last few months ordering pro 
and enjoying good quality on time delivery and really super happy now she is going uh, on uh, on friday so tomorrow and she want to um, he want to uh, go to and she has ordered hiking shoes yesterday but realized she entered the wrong delivery date so she need to change the date either for today and get the express delivery or early morning tomorrow uh, so she will be calling the set uh, where michael is uh, there and michael is a service agent who will be taking her request and michael is a super passionate uh, service agent who loves to help customers provide a great experience whenever engaging with the service center of NTO. So he will be helping Rich to uh, do this request and make sure that she gets the hiking shoes before she goes into vacation. Um, currently, Michael is a complex uh, daily workflow. He is a service agent, so he enjoys to work in Salesforce Service Cloud. He sees all his statistics response time and numbers of cases he has solved. So whenever a new request comes in via omni-channel, he checks upon the request best action advice from Einstein. And at some places, he has to put the customer on hold, which in our case will be represented by Rich. He has to do some heavy lifting. Yeah? So he has to go into a legacy order management system without any API, logging into it, finding Rachel, finding updating the delivery date and then basically continuing into NetSuite and doing the same because a couple of folks from business are using NetSuite so he has to make sure these systems are consistent and then he comes back to the customer Rachel and confirm that the change is done sometimes the customers drop because nobody waits like 10 to 15 minutes and then he has to go after the customer and say it's done yeah so two things which realize and want to improve first of all the idling time for the customer is not something which is good so customer experience is lacking uh, productivity and motivation from michael because if he enters here something a wrong information he has to correct it again here and in NetSuite. so it's also something what uh, no, nto want to improve so they have automated this process using mulesoft automation so where michael has to in it put the customer on hold now today he can continue the conversation with rachel and just trigger a rpa bot which will this legacy application without interface and do the heavy lifting part doing the changes and then continue basically here in netsuite process uh, the um, case resolution in salesforce and while this is happening the automation is happening Continue the conversation and build a relationship with the customer, introduce new products, offering discounts, and so on. And then, really, customer once the case is resolved. Yeah? And this is the first demo we are going to look into. <coughs> Sorry. So, I will be switching into my demo environment and just checking if, you know, if the things are there. Uh, my and it's ready. So, you can see. This is my personal environment. It's kind of uh, a flow I have built. It contains just in the orchestrations. This is Mules of Composer where you just see, okay, the first step is like watching the RPA bot to complete, doing something in NetSuite and then updating the record in Salesforce. Yeah? I will just, without further explanation, just hit the test button so my flow is active as this is my dedicated environment in production you will activate it and it will deploy into an embedded runtime while this is happening and activating the flow let me show you what i want to do is the net suite part and hopefully there's no maintenance going on this is good so this is basically net suite the order you can see here is a memo field which whenever michael does a manual update he writes something into the memo field and here the shipping date which he also modifies uh, which is currently on the 26th of january yeah and this is what will be updated uh, very soon let's check so flow has started composer flow has started so i will be taking the role of michael where this is my dashboard whenever i come in the morning this is the dashboard where I see all the numbers in regards to my person, resolution, time, compliance, number of cases I've solved. And the moment I'm ready, uh, I can set myself online to see what are the cases in my queue 
is there something I can already start working on? And you will see there is a request coming in to update the delivery date. So I say, okay, this is something I can do. I'm doing it on a regular basis. So I say, yes, I want to take this case. Now the 360 experience happens for Salesforce, uh, where you can see the case will be open, contact details will be displayed. And under details, you will find here the description about the case. So I will now call Rachel. And while I'm calling Rachel, Einstein has already analyzed the case and is recommending a next best so which I can now accept as a service agent. Right? The, the suggestion is from Einstein to offer a cost-free uh, date update uh, by suggesting a customer loyalty package to her. So this sounds interesting. I accept. Rachel is now on the phone. I get guided by ScreenFlow. This is Salesforce capabilities where I have an agent script. As a customer service, I can read the script to Rachel, appreciate she's a loyal customer, and as a appreciation, we want to provide which includes a cost-free update of the delivery date. Is this something she is interesting interested in? Yes, she is going tomorrow on vacation, so she would re, uh, get the get the shoes already today. So Michael then say, okay, uh, I have selected yes. So what? Let's see if today is available. So you can select it. Michael select this uh, 19th of January now and press. This is just uh, information for Michael that after the next button next, the bot will be triggered and executed. So it says, okay. And he can now continue his conversation. Say, Rachel, we have triggered the update. Do you have any other requests? We have new product offer to introduce and he continues the conversation. So what is happening now in the background? First of all, there is a comment added here in MuleSoft, uh, in a Salesforce case that the RPA bot is trigger. It will resolve the case once NetSuite are updated. So RPA bot is now securely executing whatever has been defined in a secured uh, secured environment and updating the order. And while this is happening, Mules of Composer is just watching for the trigger to complete. So the RPA process execution completes, Mules of Composer will trigger the rest of the update of the NetSuite as well as for the sales case resolve. Um, and this is actually just happened. So if I go now to NetSuite, you will see that in the NetSuite, in the memory, you will see some kind of text anonymous, uh, we have entered something. So you see MuleSoft Automation has done something, NetSuite and OMS has been updated. Um, and also here the shipping date has been changed. So this is the first update which got true. And second one is directly on the case itself. If I would refresh the case, you see it is closed. Yeah, you can resolved and you have your own faces, but I put it in close in my case. And then on the updates, it has commented that I've done the update. OMS, uh, this is the timestamp. I will resolve the case. So you can now continue your conversation with Rachel. So I, as Michael, would confirm everything is fine. Your case is closed. You will get the shoes uh, by tonight with the express delivery. We have managed it to bring it to you. This is where you have integrated the whole automation suite into the Salesforce ecosystem. And in the same manner, it can be integrated uh, with uh, SAP. Of course, it's not like seamless integration, but we are providing the open interfaces. And you may ask, okay, Amir, we have something happening in Composer execution of the flow, update in NetSuite, and something closer uh, in Salesforce. But where did the bot run? So as I mentioned, we don't want the bot to run on an agent's machine. You know, otherwise, it will disrupt the work of the agent. So it runs in a secured environment. And in order to demonstrate it to you, this is how the RP bot looks like. There's not much log logic. In my case, it's three steps, three activities in a row. So not really a logic, but you can build this logic here. And this is the RPA designer. So I have had a copy of this flow and put it back into the design phase. And I will just hit the run button, demonstrate it to you how it looks like when an RPA bot runs. Yeah? And it really opens something on a UI level. Uh, this is a simulation 
environment. It search for the customer, finds the date, then updates the date to the right date, and then save everything, close the or the this simulation in our case, and then save everything, clean the data, and then further continue and pass the data to the next step. Automation on a UI level is working, and we are providing this tool to build the automation. And this is the tool where you can use pre-built templates to really get the uh, meat on the bone in terms of automating the process um, and make it more appealing to your uh... So this was the very first demo. Um, we will be doing a bot creation from the scratch. Very. Let me just enhance and further continue, or let's pause for here for a second. Um, any questions in regards to the use case? In technicality, we will be going into the RPA and see how you can build the bot and the UI automation. But for now, in terms of the use understanding, is it clear? Was it clear for you what we have just seen? So this RPA builder, is it free to download? Um, it's a very good question. So if you have access to a RPA environment, you can download it only environment. Um, we are working towards uh, the same approach what we, what we provide with AnyPoint Studio, but we are not yet there. You can only download it from a RPA manager environment. Um, Amir, just a quick question. Um, the flow, the flow builder that we referenced, right? Um, is that in scope of this demo, or um, we can um, assume it's not no, there? Or it was magically running. No, no, it is. It is really in the Salesforce flow builder where the RPA is called from Salesforce flow. Um, but due to time constraint, you know, it in my environment it takes like years to open flows. Um, I think we can have a uh, no, not a, session not a problem. Yeah, not a problem, session. Amir. Yeah, this no. My question was um, so uh, the flow builder was actually running uh, in the service clouds, uh, so that you know that uh, connection between all these three components could happen between RPA, um, your service cloud, and uh, and I think whichever was there. Yeah, yeah. The, these and the composer. Yeah. Yeah. So it was true Salesforce flow where we called the RPA bot and the bot was continuously being uh, measured or listened by composer flow, yeah, which was a trigger. So if this bot, which we called from the flow builder, the composer flow was executed. Yeah. I got that. So basically this flow, the, so we need to create that flow in, in a service cloud, is it? Yes. Because at some point you need to trigger the bot and uh, you need to create this flow. See if the suggestion of Einstein got accepted. So you build this uh, form where you ask the customer, do you accept to press yes, yes and select the date and so on. So this is the process you have to build in order to pass this data then to the RPA. will then execute in further process. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Wait, I mean, you said like we can download this builder from uh, RPA manager, right? Yes, you can download yeah. the builder from yeah. RPA manager. Is it like, you know, do I need to, I mean, can I register uh, the free trial for 30 days or something like that? Or do I need to reach out to the person? Uh, it's a super new solution. Like the second uh, uh, thing you mentioned, you have to reach out to your MuleSoft uh, contact can uh, provide you an instance. Um, if you want to evaluate it, you get a trial with a defined, uh, then you can yeah, download all these tools and install it in your environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. <coughs> I think we will over exceed, sorry already. Uh, I talk a lot. Um, so the second use case is basically the same one with the service cloud, but we will further extend it. So now imagine NTO has automated this service agent and the order update and so on. But now um, you need events like Black Friday or Christmas Eve where you 
offer additional offering discounts to your consumers to generate more revenue the good side but the bad side or the downside of it is that during these peak times you also get a high number of requests from your consumers from the buyers on your site so what will happen is this is already great that this has been automated but michael's team is only limited five people and you are now get, getting 10 times more requests during the day so many many customer has to idle so what is the process to improve this at least for the peak times one uh, solution could be to hire additional people students and teach them educate them to work with the customer service and just do it for these days or you could say now our service team customer service team is important so let's take them out of this flow don't let them be the first touch with the customer so you introduce a chatbot and this chatbot is then the first Customer. And you know, it's also something which should uh, give you some inspiration in terms of use cases. So now we have seen um, that now the to be the first contact for Rachel, Rachel with, is not going to be get called. She will get in touch with the Einstein board. And Einstein board will offer assistance and Rachel can still decide either she goes through the process and gets the, her request done of what we have seen and receives the email or she goes into a queue because she wants to talk to an agent and then come up after 30 minutes so she can accept yes i want to wait for this queue during black friday or these peak times or i think the einstein bot or the chat bot is able to solve my issue so i can walk through the menu of the chat bot and see how it assists. so this is the the updated process uh, for the same uh, use case but now for um, which we will be quickly demoing to you uh, it's up to you so i if you want to see this demo we can do it otherwise this demo and continue with the rpa uh, bot building yeah uh, to see this demo so we can quickly uh, go through it you know i i don't want to do over uh, time uh, because we have only 20 minutes left it's up to you so if you say let's continue and see the demo it's being recorded it's good so people are not able to uh, see now they can watch the recording as well so up to you how you would like to proceed shall we quickly continue. look into the einstein yeah yeah, let's continue with that. We don't want to miss it anything. Okay, perfect. So let me then change the flow here. This one I don't need. Um, and unfortunately, I think I need to provide an update, but this is totally fine. Let me go here into to the builder. And this is a chatbot flow because there will be much more happening here. We have more steps of course the first three steps looks very similar like the other flow but here we are looking for cases by the einstein bot and then we are sending out emails so just let me reconnect it this is also something where i have changed my password let me refresh it this is the user this is fine allow hopefully it is set Be sure it is set just Give me a minute or two. And while this is saving, yeah, and fixed, put the test button here. And now what we will be doing is let me close it and launch again the customer portal. So this is now the customer portal, which you see where Rachel will be entering. And on the bottom, you can see there is an expert, right? So here she can start chatting with the Einstein bot and let me switch here to my email and move it like, I think around about this was it. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. This is the email which I will show you what is happening in the background, what is the logic involved in terms of verification and so on. So I'm Rachel, I'm this portal. I want to chat with an agent. I keep my information in. So now an agent is on its way. 
instead of now talking directly to the customer service by creating a case, I talk now to the Einstein bot who is my bot assistant and he's providing assistant to me by giving me a menu I can select from. So if I want, I can explore new offerings, but I want to manage my orders. So let's click on manage my orders and he what would you like to do next? Um, I can track order delivery, talk to an agent, place order again, or update shipping. This is actually what Rachel would like to do. And now, you know, update shipping, this is good. So he's asking me now for the customer ID. So I need to enter the customer ID here of uh, providing the validation. Okay, this is me. So they have now, this bot has sent me an email. You can 29203. This is a simple, you know, the simple way of validating that I am, uh, who I pretend to be. So I get the email, I respond to it. You can add here more logic and do your more, more secure way of validating that this is the right person. And now the bot says, okay, for this customer ID, we have an undelivered, or uh, not uh, fulfilled order, I can choose. Is this what you want to uh, update? Rachel say, yes, this is actually what I'm looking for. So now the Einstein is, okay, what do you, what do you like to update? Yeah, there are different options, delivery address, delivery date, talk to an agent with a waiting time, just for you. What if she would go that part, this is the waiting time she has to include. She can say, yeah, I want to update this date basically. This delivery date, and now it comes up with various options. It says here express delivery by 20, so tomorrow in the morning you will get it, or next week, but next week she's on vacation. So she says, okay, 20th of January is fine. Let's select it. And now the bot has a case in Salesforce Service Cloud, yeah, which is going to be closed, but for now it is suggest suggesting to note down this number because if that bot doesn't come back with an email confirmation that everything is fine, um, it use this number to contact the service center and ask her for additional help, see where the process got stuck and so on. It's actually, so here she can say, yes, I'm good. I want to end the conversation and let me just maximize it and go to, if I refresh here, you will see that a new case has been created from Einstein bot, yeah, which is currently in a new um, status. And in the background, you see uh, Composer has already processed. The so what happened now is, you know, the same case in uh, NetSuite, but it will change here. Um, the also for the delivery date, Instead of 19, we have now selected 20 to show you that it's really happening there. So let's refresh and you will see that this will slightly change through Einstein bot. We got the change and here in the shipping date, you will, it is uh, the 20th of January. So tomorrow morning. So now what is happening here, this case is going to be further processed and validated and she should receive a confirmation. So it's closed, means the composer flow is completely. Yeah, so it has been executed and everything was done and an email should be sent out, which we can see here. Dear Rachel, your order is uh, confirmed. This is the number you get uh, and this will be closed. So this has been, you see there's a, thing which was not correctly mapped. So this is the old static date we have put in. We never created a parameter for it, but it updated the system accordingly, not displayed in the email. However, this is how the bot interaction, the chat bot interaction could work with automation of backend system and really uh, making sure that the core applications are updated through the bot with the help of uh, MuleSoft automation. So this was the second scenario. And here again, I want to pause to see if it was clear what we have seen now. Or any questions?
I think so. Yeah, no questions. You are audible. Okay. Awesome. So then let's continue the third case. So instead of now building a composer integration flow, which I think is super easy to do, uh, I wanted to show. Let's see in RPA how to build a bot. Yeah, and the way we will be building the bot is we have a use case. Get rid of this. We have a use case and let me open here just a simple, let's say, do we have task automation? Yeah, we have task automation. No, it's not there anymore. Task creation maybe. This one, yeah. So simple process. It contains already few activities, but we are going to build it ourselves. And the use case is like, let me get rid of everything which is here. Let's delete it. So this is now an empty process I've been creating in RPA manager and I've moved the build phase so it appears here in my repository. Yeah? So in, you see, if I refresh, there might be systems. Okay, gone. Sorry, my mistake. I have to connect again my repository. This is fine. Test connection and hope. This should be connecting. Yeah, so login is fine. And you see here only the process which are assigned to me as a developer and where I should be working on. And one of these is the task creation I've created in uh, RPA man. Um, and now I need to build it. Yeah, so the task creation is about reading task from a text file. Is here my task. You can see there are a couple of tasks and this text file includes two main information. One is the name of the task, have the description of the task. Means here you have already uh, uh, two information in one line, so we will be reading and using this information to get entered basically in this application. This is a legacy task management application which I will be using to showcase how the automation could work and the task the way task will be created is by create the task button create task button entering the title and the description and then say create task and do it and once it's done close the task app and continue so we are going to use a shorter version of this text file only um, but this is working for any size of uh, file so this is what we will be doing. Yeah? Let me now uh, really build this flow. What I always suggest is do a manual execution. If you understand the manual execution, which you as a developer has done, then you can automate it easier because you can reflect. It's working. I open the task app and I open the text file, which I will be using. It is my task, the shortened one. And copying this task here the name go ask enter it here and in the description so here i will be using the description and then say, this is it create task task is entered and i continue in the same manner for the next line same thing uh, copy the title copy the description go into it here in the dedicated fields and then save it and at some point when you're done close everything and this is it yeah so this is what we uh, automatically and in order to do it automatically what you see this is the rpa builder environment and in the middle you see the business process flow yeah which is bpmn uh, format notation 2.0 i believe not sure 100 percent this is where you can design your own logic upon the business process you want to automate. And we are providing a toolbox, uh, very similar to the mule palette, which you can consume to automate anything on a UI or even read just Excel files, iterating through the Excel files, reading text files, checking process, entering keystrokes or entering string program to start application um closing application you can use here different kind of operations are provided for files to get read flow control is provided for error handling um 
conditional statements, general mentions. So you see many, many things which we are providing here. Uh, and you can use this palette or toolbox to build your automation boxes so your process could contain here multiple sequence of boxes with uh, applied logic and behind each box use these kind of templates in the flow and build your logic upon it we have only one box so we are going to directly so the first thing i want to do is i want to read the text file right so this is what i want to read and in order to read the text file, what you can do is either you search the whole uh, toolbox or you can search for read and then it will filter everything all the flows and templates and now you can say i would like to read the text file and you will see that it is just naming it read from text file my suggestion for you is always make it more appealing to the readability so what i want to achieve for reading the text file now is i want the lines yeah? how many lines does it include why do i want to do, do this because i want to read the file line and iterate uh, per line and get the information out so i would like to read the entire file counter lines and here basically where the file is located so my file is located if i'm not mistaken under task and there are two files i will go for the shorter one so not the large one. This is the file I want to use. And I want to read the entire file to read the number of lines. <coughs> so the next thing what I want to do is I would like to task management application. Yeah. So this is where I can start directly here from the Windows toolbox bar. But I need to call it from RPA. So there should be something called run program this run program what i can do i can provide the exe file yeah and the exe file is actually where my file is located where i can start up this task application and i will copy the path of this task application and paste it in run program with the file path and also the working directory i say should be the same one like where is living yeah so i can directly test it out so it will open the task app and i see okay this is working good for me and again don't forget to rename it accordingly so let's say here say open task application well, engineer comes and they can read the script instead of run program run program one run program two and so on name it accordingly so now I have opened the task yet. So the next thing what I would like to do is iterating through the file line by line. And in order to iterate, I need a counter, which I've defined already here. So I need an iteration process called loop. I can have a file control loop. So use the file and really have the line definition. I want to show you the other way by using the stun. And this loop is like defined already, which I can use now and say iterate file line line. And it's asking me how often you want to iterate. Yeah. I know, okay, for this file, I have six lines. I can enter six, but next time there might be 10 lines. So I'm anyway counting the lines, right? So I can link instead of a static parameter, I read what is the output of this counting line so you can say link back to the line count what we have done in the previous situation should be always read one value in an increment yeah so line by line i say okay this is fine uh, and we have it here so now in order to really see what is happening what i could do is i can say i would like to just display in a what is happening here so i understand what uh, i'm doing so let's say this is just a content and um yeah watch let's say this is the watch for me and the text i want to display is like line by line in an iteration iteration number sorry ah i forgot something sorry my mistake i forgot here to add again the read text file because what I have done so far is I have done 
the counting lines I defined the iteration but i did not read the text file within the iteration this is what i'm doing now here let's say line by line again i will provide here the file path which is in my documents my task referring to the file itself which is my task and now i can say entire file or single line and with single line he's asking number of the line you want to read i could go for a static value but it will be always the static value so i can say i want to whatever the number of this iteration within the loop is yeah so you can say i would like to read the iteration itself what you have defined the index the current index of the iteration i want to read and this is the line which i would like to read and this is also something which i want to display in my message box here next yeah and name it accordingly let's say this is my watch uh, read line I think. this is instead of the text you can say this is the iteration yeah? so the line number itself then i can say this is and this what we have yeah? so instead of completely building it you see this is the first line in the title and this is displaying me exactly the first line time out is 10 seconds or i can close it it comes up with the second line yeah description and title i can close it third line fourth fifth and sixth and that would be it yeah? so six time i was able to read it this is good so i can say yeah i am pretty in terms of reading the information so i can disable this step i don't need it for now and also you realize it's it opened this task to close it again otherwise uh, the rpa bot does not know where to uh, get the information from so now i line by line but it still contains two information so i need to cut out the title and the description from this information and to do this i can use an array function it's called read from array uh, but i can read from array i have to create an array yeah? so i have a string with uh, with the separation of the delimiter so i can use this string to array per line and say here splitting or let's say uh, creating array I would like to use the input string, which is the line I'm reading, read text. And what is the set? I want to use the semicolon. Yeah? Where does this come from? Let me again open it. So what I want to do now is I want to put line items and cut it here in the middle to get an array of one, two, so two lines. Yeah? And then I will read ded dedicated the type description. So let's do that so i have created it here this is the definition it will create an array for me and read the array the first thing i want to read is of course the title yeah? so this is the title i am defining here he's asking me array. of course he realized that here creating array is providing an output which is an array so i want to read this output and i first item yeah? We know from API starts with zero, the first item, but here it's dedicated and say it starts with one. So you say this is the title. And I can also copy paste it directly here and rename and say this is not the title one, but the, this. And this is the second line of the array. What I want to read, that would be it. I have access to this and my task gap started. So now I can continue to insert these two items into my task gap. Yeah? And it, I have to use an app session. And the app session are for all applications you have on a desktop. You can say, I have a Windows application. You go with the app session and try to automate it. If you have a browser, you can go down here, web automation, where you have a web session for Chrome, web session for firefox web session for edge and it works way of working in the same manner like you will see now uh, me doing and creating the task for the task gap and instead of dragging and i want to show you the more uh, faster way quick creation where you can also jump into and now i can side by side and really create my flow here so let me insert here 
So, and one second, cancel here again. Defined, sorry. Okay, I will do it. So I need to start the uh, task app. This is the way where I now within this uh, application and I can now say, I want to start from here. And the first thing what I want to do is, come on. Yeah, I'm here and I would like to click on a button. When this app is open, the first thing I click on the button so I can say in the app automation, click app element. Yeah, let me put it in a more easier way. So I put the app here to the left. Now I can say click app automation. So he's asking me, show me what you want to click. So I can say identify element, go with the mouse, hover the button and press F2. It will recognize the button. And now you can say this is click new task. New task. I want to do um, stop capturing. You can say okay. So this step has been added. Click new task. And I do menu. And now this form is open. And I need to now identify the title as well as the description. So in terms of doing it, say I want to enter text or set text to an app element. So I again comes the, the wizard where I can do the object, identify element, hover the element with the mouse, press F2, it will recognize and enter title, stop capturing because you captured it already. And now instead of writing something for text, I could reuse or use the title from the array which I have read and say this is the one where you get the data from the previous steps use it as a title same i do with the description field identify hover f2 it identifies the object enter description stop. map the right description from the line you have read and the array you created as string okay and that's it and the click again on the task button. So let's say click app element, identify, hover, let's say save task, task, stop identifying it, click okay, and are done. So you can cancel it here and also exit the quick creation mode. So this is what you have created now. And the, as a step, what I can do, I want to close the application but outside of this iteration. So I want this to happen within the iteration. line, clicking on the task button, entering the title, entering the description, then saving the task. And then when I'm done and I would like to close the task gap. And this can be done with the check process. You can again drag and drop it in and say task app. Now he's asking me, show me the process of the task gap. As I know it already, it's main.exe, but you can also find it directly here in the uh, exe where the target is. So main.exe is the file which is running. And if this process exists, I can say kill it. Yeah, Just close this process, everything is. So this would be it. Yeah? And let's see if this process, what I have now clicked together, hit the start button and it will open and basically read the file line by line entering the task into uh, and just continuing and at the end closing it um, and making sure that the task has been entered into the application you can make use of the toolbox with the pre-built templates and build your automation script um, and just automate upon ui yeah? So you may be thinking, okay, this is good. We have seen it, it uh, looks. So now if you have created already something on a UI for task creation, you don't want other users to create it as well, right? So what you can, we have something called an activity library. And you can say this task creation, I would like to add to the activity library so it will become available for other users as well so and they can look 
for instance, task, there is nothing. Let me add it. So it will become available there. So add to the act upload. <coughs> okay, I have to provide a description as well. Task app. Uh, that's it. Let's add it. And you will see it will appear in a moment. The task uh, in the activity library reloading everything and if i look now for task you see my task creation is there put things directly into my flow and reuse it so you don't do the duplication of work this is also something which we are providing a, a composability on the ui level and ui automation but again i have talked a lot we have already over exceeded i want to ask in the round is it are there questions first of all and is it clear what we have seen with uh, rpa automation yes i mean it was very nice session actually you know <laughs> thanks a lot a any questions in terms of rpa builder the templates we are providing automation data capturing so you may have questions like can i create input for this activity or for the whole flow. Um, this is a RPA solution. Of course, you can create activity parameters and pass it from the outside into this automated process. RPA do whatever it has to do with this data, manipulate it, insert into core application. And then you can also provide output parameters, which then further can be consumed from Composer into APIs. So there's a lot of... All right, so let's go to our presentation. Next item on my presentation is the use cases. And the use cases, we have seen already few use cases. Demo with the customer service, with the Einstein bot. And this is basically the first thing I think the most appealing use case chatbots or with automation to really accelerate not only customer service agents but also employee experience internal chatbots you can do it of course in a retail specific scenario where an einstein bot was used and triggered rpa which but by a composer and it triggered automation and uh, really provided connected user experience to the user but here you can go for within an organization or even outside customer facing. So this is one of the things where I see use cases are a lot where organizations could improve the way of working. Second one also from experience talking to many hospitals admission, and I can only share the view from the Swiss market or from the Swiss hospital. So the way it is working when I'm, uh, my doctor want to send me to a hospital, he sends an email to the hospital with my patient's information. He it as an email and there is a person sitting, an assistant, opening a dedicated uh, hospital application, opening the PDF, entering my data and what need to be done to admit me to the hospital. And this is a critical uh, process, right? Enters instead of the right leg, the left leg, this could really cause damage. So there are few use cases where doctors are sending admissions to the hospitals or hospitals are overloaded and they are sending multiple admissions to other hospitals. There is a person who is dealing with the data and entering it into the hospital system um, via email. Again, same issues what you have. It's really sometimes time consuming, less reliable and a professional is working on this tedious task so you can automate it super simple with our um, automate the uh, email reception monitor the box uh, the incoming email decide what kind of attachment it is it's an excel or pdf and then go through different paths and this is what you can really build in the same manner from the logic point of view in mules of rpa um, using this process builder process designer and really continue here um with uh, the automation of the flow this is uh, what is possible um again this is fast and uh, accurate the third one is invent 
management. And you see, uh, Jatendra is going to share the presentation later on, on with you. So here is always a link. So for all, we have recorded demos, so you can watch it and see how this has been built, how it looks like in a demo environment, uh, what our inventory management, also customer related prospect told us about this uh, use case. Um, yeah, there's one in an organization who is taking care about the stock inventory. Um, he need to basically go into SAP check daily basis. The stock overview for defined materials and products could be take up to two hours daily where he has to then what are the uh, materials which need to be ordered, but he first need the approval from his managers. Then once the approval is there, he can purchase the order, release the order in SAP, and then send order confirmation uh, to the manager. And this is also a process which can be easily automated instead of having a professional person working there to bot and automate the whole flow in the same manner. So the bot will be doing these kind of things. You can also go, so the bot is for me not tied to a UI. It can be completely done to API using the SAP connector is also completely fine. Same uh, benefits, fast, reliable, re repeatable, and resilient. Um, again, let's pause because I don't want to rush through this presentation. Um, questions on the use cases. All right, so let's wrap up the automation meetup. We have been talking about the API first automation approach. Of course, you have seen use cases in the demo, super important. And when I, I have you are coming. Question. I have one question. Yeah, please. So generally, like uh, if you see the, like I, I will talk about supply chain management use cases, right? So in su supply chain use, uh, uh, supply chain management, we generally get a, purchase order or invoice maybe in PDF file, right? So like, do, does this automation tool provide a capability where we can scan? We have something called OCR, right? Uh, OCR kind of capability, right? Where like those PDF files can be scanned and it can extract the data from that, uh, from those purchase order or invoices. Yes, so there are different capabilities you can use uh, from RPA yeah. or to read PDF documents, you can decide, okay, if this is a system generated PDF, means generated through Word, uh, Google documents, then you can mark and read it. So it can be read easily from something called read PDF template within, or if it's a, if it's a scanned document, you cannot mark the text on a scanned document. So here you would go for a OCR, a built-in capabilities which are provided, which are strong. But if you want to really use for handwriting, where somebody has written something in a readable manner, then you can also go and integrate with AWS TextRec. Also, therefore, we are providing the template. The document in a more key pair value in a JSON format. So if you have an invoice number, it will read the invoice number attribute with the value of the invoice number, the address with the address lines, the customer number with the customer line. So it can really do much more what is possible to read unstructured data. And here we are providing the capabilities. And one of the use cases you have seen, there's a link for admission where we are actually reading the PDF file. So you can uh, watch the recording of this, uh, how to read PDF files. Sure. Any kind of system. You're welcome. So now talking about API first automation art. I think it's really, you know, you get excited when you see the bot doing something on a UI level, but don't get overwhelmed. Always think about what you already are experts on headless automation. Yeah, so you are already composing using any point, uh, integrating packet system, multi-cloud, B2C, B2B, validated environment. So you have uh, already economy of your uh, component place. With MuleSoft Automation, we are just adding uh, the RPA protocol for you to use building blocks, share it in exchange in this economy uh, of the composability and use it 
and make people who want to automate they can automate using what you have been built as building blocks from rpa from apis and connect user to orchestrate your automation flow and then let the user do the work just be the enabler within the organization and let automate by reusing rpa processes apis or out of the box connectivity within composer and yeah allow them to get empowered through mules of automation and deliver uh, a successful execution on automation with that i have just linked few resources uh, i think you have seen it it has been shared many times in the mules of community lasers read the resources and on the news of training uh, site you will get also here the news of composer training very similar to the rp training which is also there uh, self-paced trainings feel free to execute and upskill yourself into rpa and news of composer and uh, engage uh, here as a community um, and with that i think it has been a super interactive session so from my side, I want to thank you. Thank you, Jackie and uh, Nitesh for inviting me, giving me the chance to convey our message on Mulesoft Auto. And um, yeah, thank you for the possibility to be present in this meetup. No, no, thanks hey, to, to, to you, Amit, uh, for presenting to, to this quick, session. Quick question. Yes, please. Number one, we have do you have any time tutorials? Now. Do you have any tutorials? There are tutorials. Tutorials. Um, I mean, like, not really uh, I think it's on, it's on Trail Mix, right? So you can find a lot of content on Trail Mix, right? Yes. So the tutorials are provided in Trail Mix. Um, so I know tutorials where you have also provided the resources in terms of apps. I've not tried the Trail Mix community uh, and uh, courses. So. Uh, it's it's providing tutorials, but what I have seen in our documentation page is help to all these templates you see in RPA, uh, which is comprehensive uh, and coming up with examples where to use it. I think what I know, and maybe uh, if someone has experienced the Trailblazer community, feel free, free to share your feedback if this is really going towards. I think it's good, uh, like, you know, it provides like high level, like high level uh, information about hyper automation, composer, RPA, you know. So, yeah, it's all like it may not explain more and more use cases. Like it, it, it is more explaining about like, you know, what kind of capabilities provided by RPA, what are the different components, how they interact, what is the composer, what different kind of connectors are available, you know, so those kind of concepts. And there are a few use cases and all the yeah. Yeah, there are like around 12 to 13 uh, modules uh, in trail mix, I think. Oh, cool. Good to know. Thanks a lot. And there was a second question as well, I think. All right. So if we don't have any questions, then thanks again for joining, taking the time in late night uh, session and really contributing in a super interactive session. Thanks a lot for your time and effort and in Mulesoft solutions. And thanks, thanks Amir for this great session. Like, you know, so you are talking continuously from last two hours, 20 minutes. It's just awesome basically. Right? Thank you so much. And you have provided a lot of uh, great information about RP and the composer, basically. So this is very helpful. And this is very helpful for the people who want to start working with RP and the composer, basically. Thank you so much, Amir, for taking the time and talking in the Surat News of Meetup. And we are looking forward for more sessions from you, uh, you know, in upcoming days. Thank you so much once again. And thanks, everyone. Thanks, all the participants for joining the session. We're looking forward to you to join the more session at the Surat Mule Submitter. Thank you so much. If you want, if you are, thank you. If you don't have any question, uh, we can close the session. Yeah. Okay.